Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Okay, we're gonna talk about uh, lessons and blessings. Lessons and blessings. Now, you know, life is, is full of lessons and blessings. Meaning that when you go through difficult times in your life, most likely it's a lesson. A lesson that you need to learn. And once you learn the lesson, then you go on to something better. That's why you're here, to learn and to grow. So when you go through a difficult time, you must heal to grow. Okay? So now let's take it back to you dealing with the narcissist. You dealing with the narcissist, okay? Whether you're uh, dating him or you're married to him or whatever, but he is in your life, which means that, you know, he's making you feel bad most, if not all the time. You might be afraid of him in some way, afraid of him in some way. He, he tries to intimidate you all the time to have control of your every move, how you look, what you say, what you do, while he's constantly on your back criticizing you. You know, the abuse, the abuse of the narcissist. What I'm here to tell you is, it's a lesson. I know that's hard for you to believe. But if you understand what it is, it will help you in your healing of it. It will actually help you in the healing part. Because when I went through the, the abuse of it all, I didn't know anything. I was just suffering, 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 and trying to find the answer of it all when, after I was discarded. You see? So... In my devastation and my broken heart and my tears and everything, I knew I knew that this was something, but I couldn't put my hand on really what it was. So I I did a lot of meditation, a lot of meditation, and asking questions of the universe to reveal to me what it was all about, what had happened to me, and why did I have to go through something like this. This was like the best and the worst relationship I ever had. That's right. If you can, if, <laughs> if you can imagine that, the best and the worst. I'll say it was the best because the narcissist knew exactly the things that I enjoyed doing. Now, whether he got a lot of information from me, you know, maybe, or if it was instinctual. I don't know if the narcissist who is an evil being, if he can sense the things to entice you and to, to get you tied to him, you know, he probably can. He probably can. Anyway, he did all the things that I, that I expect from a man and I was always smiling it was pleasant you know there were some little control issues in there which I overlooked which I overlooked in the beginning I, I'll admit that and then when the when the abuse came it was stunning because the little the little control things that was dropped along the way got to be more aggressive, more aggressive attacks, you know, on my, on my being. Everything was a little something wrong with it. Everything, no matter what I did, no matter, you know, uh, it, I remember he came in and he wanted me to prepare something special for him. He, all he brought was the piece of meat. And he wanted me to to make this dish for him. 
And so I found the recipe for it and went out and I had to get a lot of different kind of ingredients for him because when you're with when you with the narcissist, when you hook up with him, you don't and you're trying to make it work, he would work you to death. <laughs> He would have you running everywhere doing things for him. Well, anyway, I ran all over town to get the right ingredients and everything. And it was the kind of dish where you half of it had to be cooked on the grill and then the other half in the, of the whole nine yards. Everything. So when he came to dinner and I had it for him nicely prepared and presented it to him on his plate, he... Uh, took a bite of it and he said um when i had it the other time the guy had some kind of sauce to put on it <laughs> i was like i wasn't there i don't know anything about the sauce so the, the it was no good because of this missing sauce but what i'm telling you is these are things that the narcissist does just chipping away chipping away no matter what you do it's always going to be something wrong with it he's never going to support you in anything you do now you're living with this narcissist or you're with him and you're taking all of this abuse because well a number of reasons you may feel like you need him you know maybe he's the one you know that's supporting everybody. And most likely, if you're living with or whatever, he's, he's, he's the boss. Anyway, he's the boss of everything. We'll, we'll say that, okay? Whether you working or not, he's the boss of everything. So um, you're going through all of this. And plus, he's mistreating the kids too. Remember, he's not nice to them. Now... A narcissist, let me tell you something, they will take a child, one of their children, and and treat them a little differently in front of the other kids, like they're the golden child. You see? So every time you see him with this child, you know, he's acting like he really cares about this child. He's taking his child with him wherever he goes or something like that. Now, if you're with a narcissist, there are a number of things that could be going on with that. He might be molesting that child. <laughs> you need to check that, number one. Number one. Seriously, you need to check that. And number two, he may be doing it to make the other children jealous. To bring up that envy. You see, he loves that kind of supply to get everybody in the house fighting against each other and not liking each other. And you don't know why you don't like your siblings, but you don't because he is manipulating everybody, everybody. He's abusing his, his wife all constantly because she's the one that's dealing with him <laughs> every day, all day. You see? So, even when she's at work, he's probably calling her every five minutes to see where she is, what she's doing, or whatever. He's checking, making sure that he's still got her under control. Now, you're going through all of this, and you're saying, this is a hard lesson. It is. It's a very hard lesson. But, but. The universe brought this lesson to you for you to heal and grow and grow. Look at some of your own toxic ways in this relationship so you can heal them and be a better person and understand who this narcissist is because this narcissist is a demon spirit and the universe wants you to recognize it for what it is it's not just a mean person with mean you know what i mean you know how you just say oh that's just the way he is no 
No. No. He's accepted a demon. And that's how the way that the demon is. That's the way that the demon is. You see? So, if you're already in this situation, now, now you're listening, and you're looking at him, yeah, he's doing all these things. He makes me feel bad all the time. Half the time I'm crying, you know, and if I got kids, I'm mean to them because he's mean to me, you know? I just feel like I want to, I don't know, just bust. I don't know. If you're in that situation, the universe is saying, all right now, it's up to you to make a decision. Are you going to continue to deal with this? Or are you going to say, I'm better than this. I'm better than this. And let it go. And let it go. Because honestly, you cannot heal as long as you are with the demon. The universe wants you to understand this. To understand this. And once you know that you are with a demon, a demon, a real demon. And that's why he's trying to destroy you hurting you all the time embarrassing you let me tell you let me tell you a story when i was with my narcissist one time we went to the movie and i i love uh, the buttered popcorn that they do at the movie I, I love that so we went and got the the big barrel getting ready to go into the movie so during the um i guess you know when you go in they don't have the the feature right up hand right off they have those features coming in, the, you know, upcoming uh, publications or whatever you call them. Anyway, I'm sitting there eating a popcorn and one got caught right here in my throat. Cut my air completely off. Off. And so he, I stood up and motioned him. He, 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 he you know, he was there like just looking at me and I motioned to him. I, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And so then he tried to do the the Hamlet, Hamlet maneuver on me. But he was doing it like real soft. And at this time, my my eyes are getting big. And, and people in the movie theater are looking now because I'm about to die right here. And do you, do you know that he just let me go like that? And some fella jumped over the seat. And did it, did the Heimlich on me and saved my life. Saved my life right there. You see? And so, so he told me later, you know, I, I just didn't have enough strength in my hands. That's what he told me. But see, when you're with the narcissist, the universe lets these things happen to wake you up, to leave. To leave, it's time to go. You don't want this. You see, the way that the universe works, if you accept something in your life, then the universe will say, well, hey, you like that. That's what you want. So it'll bring you more of that. More of that in your life because you accepted it. You see? But if you reject it, you reject it. No, I deserve better. I am better. I will no longer accept this. Then the universe will give you a chance to leave it, heal, and the universe will bring you something better. But unfortunately, a lot of people never get to the healing part. Because as soon as they get out of that relationship, they'll just say, oh, well, huh, that was just a bad one. And they jump right into another one. They never heal. So now they're dragging all that pain from that relationship into the new relationship. And most times the new one won't work. And then the one after that won't work. And the one after that won't work. You know why? You're taking that same 
negative energy that you got from the demon into every relationship. And plus the universe is still going to send you the same person over and over and over again. Of course, the demon's never going to let you go. But the universe will send you more and more people like the demon because you, you told the universe the demon was okay. You stayed with it. You told the universe, okay, yeah, I like this. I like it. So he's going to send you more. You see, that's where your free will comes in. That's where your free will comes in. Where you make a decision whether you want this or whether you want that. So if you tell, if you're in a situation and all of us, if you dated anybody, <laughs> you've been in a sticky situation. Did you learn from it? Or did you just say, ah, I'll go find somebody else and forget about that. Then the next one, you say the same thing when it falls apart. And the next one, the same thing. No. No. The universe wants you to be happy, but to learn, to grow, to heal. That's why you're here. People, people don't know why they're here and they're not looking to, to figure it out. A lot of people, because of religion, they think they're here to recruit people. They think they're here, you know, to recruit as many souls as they can so they can float off to the next, to the next paradise somewhere. That's false. False. You're here to ascend, to learn, heal, grow. You see? You see? So the next time when you come around, you'll be, your, your, your energy will be at a higher vibration, which won't be as low as it is right now. And when you come out of abuse, any kind of abuse, whether it's narcissistic abuse or whatever it is. If you look at the situation like it is, because it, you had an evil experience. An evil experience. But you have to heal from it. You can't just run off and try to forget it and think everything's okay. No, you will repeat it. You will repeat it. And you'll spend your whole life repeating it and never learn anything. If you're with a narcissist, he's put you through a lot of things. So you should have learned a lot. A whole lot. Number one, you should be able to spot one right off the bat. You should be able to spot him right off the bat. Now that you know that he's a narcissist. See, before it's hard to spot because you didn't know what a narcissist was. You didn't know what to look for or anything. But if you've been with one, you're sure not going to let allow the next man you think to treat you the way that he did. But well, here's the trick. If you didn't heal from that one, you're going to be taking that energy with you to the next relationship. You see? And, it, and that's going to cause a problem in the next relationship. And if he's doing the same thing, now you too got, you too come with baggage from old relationships. And how do you think that's going to work? And if you didn't heal from the narcissist, <laughs> you better check him out because he could be one too. Because you never hear from that narcissist. You see? And it may it may not happen right now. You could meet the narcissist here this year and not meet the next next the next narcissist like that one. You know, in a couple of years. But I want to tell you, you might not know him intimately, but you may be dealing with narcissists. Okay. For instance, you're you're 
married to a narcissist and you're trying to learn that you're trying to get out of that situation so that you eventually can heal and all of that now you go to the job you could be working for a narcissist <laughs> and a lot of us have worked for straight up evil narcissists but we didn't understand what it was these are people who have the whole office competing against each other. They say they say teamwork and they even have the little seminars for everybody to work together and all of that all that kind of stuff. But they have everybody competing it against each other. Now this is not all offices, but most of them. They don't tell people how much they're making and <laughs> people looking and seeing the other people or uh, being able to afford things that they can't afford and you work they you work in the same job as they work in the same hours and everything all that kind of stuff is confusion and the narcissist loves to have that confusion going on and they and and also if you're working for a narcissist he wants you to be afraid of him that's control yeah he'll dangle your job in front of you if you don't do this you can walk out the door. He'll do all sorts of things like this. But you'll never be happy working under a narcissist. So what do you do in that case? Find a way if you can. You know, I, I was about to say find a way to leave it. If you can, that's the best thing. I know uh, if you're older, if you're older, you might, you know, Want to, want to stick it out. You've probably been there 20 years anyway. You, 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 you can stick it out some more. But just remember, the longer that you are dealing with the demon, he's sucking your life out of you. The longer that you're dealing with the demon. And the demon, you could be working for the demon. He could be at the church. He could be the head at the church. He could be anybody at the church. He can be at the school. That's right. He could be anywhere. And he is anywhere. And he has a counterpart. It's the female narcissist. The universe wants you to be aware that the spiritual battle that you've been talking about in church is happening right in front of your eyes. And I guess, I don't know what people are waiting on, waiting on to see angels and devils fighting in the sky or something. I don't understand. When it's happening right here in front of your eyes. And you don't know, you don't even recognize it. You don't recognize it. But yeah, these people have accepted an evil spirit into their lives. And I want to say something about that because somebody did ask a question about um, the narcissistic spirit. How does the people, how does a person get it? This spirit doesn't go around just jumping on people. Now, you can't just be laying in your bed peacefully and all of a sudden he jumps on your land now. You have to sign the contract. It's a contract that you sign with the evil spirit, the demon. He comes to you with a contract. So, and usually he comes to the vulnerable people, people who has, have had some difficulties in their life and uh you know need some kind of help or whatever that's usually usually when he'll come with the contract and he will be in your ear and and get you to accept him he's your friend he's going to help you and it's it's all subconsciously it's not you know some people do hear him in the ear some people do but they're in you know in such whatever they don't recognize what's going on. Yeah. Some people do hear him right in the ear. 
And then he'll have you, he'll convince you to do certain things. Go, go over there and do this right here. Now, if you do it, you have signed the contract. And a lot of uh, narcissists, because this happened when, uh, uh, this happened through trauma. Narcissism happens through trauma. And they were very young when it happened. It was easy for the demon to come in and take over. Their little kids, you know, their mothers or fathers is cursing at them and beating them and not feeding them and whatever the situation. Or molesting them. They could be in the they could be up on a knob hill and be molested every day. Things like that. The demon comes. And you know, come on. Let me comfort you. You see? What happened to you wasn't a bad thing. It, it was okay. And it's probably happening over and over and over until the child just accepts it. That's when you sign the contract. When you accept it. See, you could be molested a hundred times. You could be raped. But not unless you, if you want to go out and rape other people or molest other people, you didn't sign the contract. And the demon didn't enter you. But once you initiate the evil, the evil trait, the evil whatever, once you do it yourself with your own saying, yeah, you say it in your mind, yeah, well, I'm going to do it. I, 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 I can see it. You signed the contract. He's in. He's in. And when he comes in, he eats everything up inside. Everything. And then he takes over. He takes over. So when you're dealing with narcissists, that's what you're dealing with, a demon. No matter what it looks like, whatever. But he's, you can tell he's treating you awful. And he's never going to change, but you think, you think that he will. With time, with time, you know, let's go to the church and he go and pray and all of that. Come back, same thing. Come back, same thing. Nothing seemed to help. Nothing is going to help. Number one, when you take him to your place of worship, if it's a whole lot of other narcissists there, how you think... <laughs> They can help the demon when his buddies are right there. The universe wants people, you, we're talking to you, I'm not people. The universe wants you to understand that evil is here, right? It's been here, it never left. And it is destroying your life. The universe doesn't want that. And you know, like say, the marriage vows say, um, you'll be with them better or worse from rich or poor until death do us part. Who wrote that anyway? That's why I want to know who, who wrote that? I don't think you should say that in your wedding vows. To, you're going to stay with this fool until death do you part. That's ridiculous. You don't know if you're going to stay with him at all. You don't know if you're going to stay with him a week. More or less a month. Of what, number one, you just want that big fancy wedding. And after that, a lot of women don't even think past that. They just think it's going to, they're just going to skip off into la-la land or whatever. Let me tell you, if you married a narcissist, <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare. It, <laughs> You ain't going to see no la-la land. And a lot of women do. That's why these marriages are not working out. People don't take the time to know these people and to 
try to spot if they're narcissists or what's wrong with them or what or what and and plus you know if they came out of prison they'll abuse you too because they've been they've been sleeping with men most of them almost all of them been sleeping especially if they were in there i would say if they was in there a year two i would be i would be very weary of course men are motivated by sex i mean that's their prime motivator sex and food so you're gonna tell me they're gonna be in prison for all these years and not you know i'm not saying all of them because <laughs> i don't know i'm not i'm not gonna say all of them but a lot of them and we we on the outside need to be aware of that because these guys have been around violence and all sorts of things you know and you don't want to pick them people up and bring them right bring that energy that vile energy from that situation right into your life right right from prison right into your soul you don't want that people please wake up the universe wants you to be happy wants you to be abundant and wants you to be successful but the narcissist does not want any of those things for you and he will do anything to make your life miserable and your kids he'll damage your kids so much until half of them be on drugs or half of them be trying to kill themselves or all kind of craziness. It's a demon. And if the woman is a narcissist, it's even worse because the woman usually is the one over the children, you know, to help the children grow and everything. And so if this, this, <laughs> if your mother is doing all sorts of cruel things to you and sexualizing you and all of that, then that's the man that needs to recognize who he's dealing with. And and I'm going to tell you, most times when that happens, the man, I'm sorry, the man will, will walk off. He's not going to, he's not going to take that because he feels like he can, there's plenty of women out there. He, you know, that that's a man's mentality because women just open up their legs for everybody. So, he, he feels like he don't have to deal with you if you you just crazy like that. Now, there are some men who really love their women. You see? And this is who the narcissist gets anyway. Somebody that can really love you, you see? So, they really love their women. And believe me, they get hurt. They get hurt and everything. And go through the same process the healing process but I believe that the men will leave it much sooner than the women will because of the children because of the support because of the uh, stigma of being a single mother or whatever or single or whatever or divorcee or whatever because of religion a lot of reasons more reasons for a woman to stay in a terrible relationship than a man. That's what I'm saying. See? But the universe wants you to be whole. Be whole. My experience was totally devastating. Totally. But I, I've said it a number of my videos and I want you to understand this. I'm thankful for the experience. It broke me down to my knees. To my knees. And during the healing process, the universe built me up to a better person than I was before the experience. And the universe would do the same for you. But you have to pass the test. I say it's a lesson, but you test it. Just like when you go to school, they teach you a lesson, but then there's a test. 
And the test is whether you're going to pass or whether you're going to fail. Well, how did I get that? You have to pass or fail. <laughs> That's what I'll say. You're either going to pass or fail, which means you're going to leave the narcissist, heal, and ascend. That's what it means. So, I, I certainly hope that I was clear on this video. It's really important for you to understand what's really going on and why you are here. Why you're here. You're not here just to have a big, loose orgy. That's what people think. Orgy. You know, just... I, that's a trick of the demon to make you think. And if you look at publications or anything, your clothes are getting more skimpier and skimpier and skimpier and skimpier. You know... Skimpier. And 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 these celebrities are leading people down that dark path. And because people are impressed by celebrities. And if the celebrities are not on the path to healing and ascension, then they gotta be leading you down a, another path where you feel like you have to have, you know all of these trimmings to what? To attract the opposite sex. Listen. When <laughs> you were made to attract the opposite sex, you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to enhance it. Look look at the animal world. Are they out there buying lashes and hair and all sorts of things to attract, getting it, getting the breast done, the bust behind to attract their opposite sex. No, but the demon has convinced us that that's what we need to do. Oh, you ain't gonna have nobody. If you don't do it, you ain't gonna have nobody. You see, and if you don't, if you don't have sex with them right away, you ain't gonna have nobody. I heard many, many women say that. You know. Well, if I don't have sex with him, he's going to go and find somebody that's good. Let him. Let him. Let him. And when the narcissist is ready to discard you, those that are in the relationship with the narcissist, when he gets ready to discard you, you are, <laughs> you are blessed. You are being released. Released. All you got to do now is heal. You're going to be sad and broken hearted. But if you understand what you went through, it'll be easier for you to release it and to heal. You see, it took me two and a half years to heal because that first year I was probably still trying to figure out what was going on. Why? Because after the discard, he kept coming back. That's another thing, the narcissist, the demon. The demon, see, once you're on his supply list, you're never really off. He just puts you in the recycling bin. And then he just keeps, you know, he, he got a lot of supply. He'll go over here, over here, over here. Then he'll hit you, go over here, you know, just keep you on the hook. He'll keep you. He'll, he'll hit you up once in a while just to make sure you're still there. You see, but you just, you just always going to be a supply to him. So I didn't realize that when I was with him. So he kept coming back and I'm thinking he's coming back to do better. Coming back to do better. He comes back with the love bombing again to get you in there again. And then the devaluing, because he's already discarded you before, the devaluing starts right away. So now you, you, you leave him, you're hurt. He's never going to leave you feeling happy. Never. You leave him. You're hurt. You don't know why he said that. Why do you have to do that? You know? It's confusing. And he's, 
He means for it to be confusing. He's a demon. He's a demon. The universe wants you to grow. And if you never had challenges, you know this. If you never had a challenge, you would have no reason to grow. You would have no reason to grow at all in anything. The universe wants you to grow. So the universe sends you these challenges. And once you pass the test and heal, you get blessed for that. The universe bless you when you pass the test. <laughs> Believe it. Believe it. Just like in school. When you pass the test in school, you get one of those little stickers or rewards or whatever. Let me tell you, the universe bless you when you pass these tests. Your life just gets better and better and better. It's not complicated when you have the understanding. When you're going through it, it's very confusing. It is very, and if you're living with it, believe me, my father was a narc. You see, and when I met this man and fell for him so hard because he reminded me so much of my dad. I searched my whole life looking for love that I didn't get from my dad, the narc. So see, with my dad, I didn't learn the lesson, I guess because I wasn't intimate with him or anything, you know, because he, he was never, he never loved me. He showed that. You see? So then the universe say, okay, yeah, you know, I was years, 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 I'm a grown woman. And here come this man reminding me just like my dad. You see? And in the beginning, he treated me real good that my dad never treated me. He got, he get you in there, see? And then that's when the devaluing, and then finally the discard. Now, if let me make this clear. If you're with a narc and he has some status and he needs to show a wife, he's not going to, he'll discard you emotionally, but he won't walk out. It's, it, it's some men walk out because they wives find out that they're gay or whatever. But other than that, usually if he is of some status and he needs to have a wife to show the camera, you know, whatever, he'll stay with the wife or he'll stay with a wife. He'll stay with, he'll have a wife. You understand? Just supply. That's all it is. He doesn't love anybody. It's just supply. And the universe wants you to understand that. That's why you went through it. It wasn't that you had bad luck and you cursed and all that. No. It was a lesson from the universe that you needed to learn. And I'm telling you, it's a blessing. It is a blessing. Only... When you heal, you're going to feel so good about yourself. Like nobody can ever hurt you again. You free. So anyway, I know I talked long enough on this one. But I really appreciate all of you. And thank you so much for supporting this channel. And um, I hope that I said something uh, in this video that will help someone. So thank you again, and I hope to see you next time.